So the next type of a block which is available to handle an exception is your finally block. So by now we have learned what a try block does, catch block does, but what a finally block does. Try is nothing but to find out where the exception has occurred. Catch will handle those exception which is exception handler. What does this finally block does? A finally block is mainly created to avoid the consequences of your resource leakage. If there is any leakage, like if you want to close any connection or your file stems, then you use your finally keyword. Here the finally block it says that whether a catch statement occurs or not, a finally block statement is written. Whether an exception occurs or not, the finally block will get executed. And a finally block will be written with at least one try block. If there is a try block written, only then you can write a finally block. Otherwise, you cannot write any finally block. So, the syntax is that you write try block, then catch, there are multiple catch blocks. Finally, you have written something. So, it says that whether an exception occurs or not, whether if no exception has occurred, none of the exception handler will handle. And if no exception is occurred, then the finally catch block will be executed. So, you have this Java virtual machine which says that it will first go search for an exception. If there is an exception occurred, it will be handled by one of the catch blocks or the exception handler. If none of the exception handlers catches the exceptions, or catches it may it may not catch in either of the cases the finally block will execute and this finally block may consist of number of statements which may help you to close the connection or avoid resource leakage or any other information so let us see with the help of this example where we say we have created a class called except test and in the main method we have declared an array and the array length is 2 in our try block, what are we trying to do is that we are trying to display the value out of the array. The length of array is 2, whereas we are trying to print the value at array 3. We do not know the value at array 3 because our array length is only till 2. Therefore, it will throw you an exception array out of bound and that will be taken by catch. Right? So, catch will immediately follow your try block. So, you write array index out of bound exception and then you want to print. You can even use print stack trace in order to print in detail information about your exception. Immediately following that you have a finally block. It says that whether an exception occurs or not we will execute this finally block and every finally block will need at least one try block. Whether you have catch block or not it will make no difference but a finally says that a rule that a try block should exist to execute a finally block. So, in this we are storing a value at array index 0, the value is 6. Now, we are trying to print this value. In case we were trying to print the value at array 2 where it has not thrown any exception, even in that scenario this particular finally block would have executed. So, let us run this program practically to understand how does try catch and finally block works together in order to handle an exception and whether an exception occurs or not it will execute certain other block of statements. So in this class let us learn about the finally block what a finally block does and how many finally block can you have and is it necessary to have one try block before that or not. So here we have created a class called except test that is nothing but exception test where we are trying to test an exception using the try and finally block. Every try block should have one catch block is that necessary or every try block should have a finally block is that necessary. No, let us know in the reverse order in order to have a try block if you are having a catch or a finally block you should have a try block. Having a try block not necessarily mean that you should have a catch or a finally block. You can just have try followed with a catch or try followed with a finally. But in order to use one finally block, you should have at least one try block. So here what we have done, we have created a class called except test in that we have created a main method and now declaring an array. And how you declare an array? So we have declared an array of integer type. We write int the array name and the brackets equals to new 
array that is new constructor of an array and the size is 2 so the array size is 2 so now in try block what are we trying to do is that we are trying to print the value at array 3 index but our array length is only till 2 right so what is this 0 1 2 right so the length is only 2 that is 0 and 1 and when we are trying to pull out the value at index 3 that is the value 3 so do we have any value at 3 no we have only declared 2 therefore this particular statement should throw us an error and this error is a type of array index out of bound exception so immediately after the try block we close the braces we open a catch block we write catch keyword in the bracket we write what kind of an array it is and then followed with an object name which will hold the information of this particular array so we write array index out of bound exception e and please print what kind of an exception it is so once you catch this you are trying to write a finally block where you are trying to initialize the value of array at index 0 as 6 now at array index 0 you have the value as 6 and first element of value will be printed as a of 0 is your value 6 so this particular statement will print your first element value as 6 the next line you say that the finally statement is executed and this statement we have written just to understand that you are in finally block and what this finally block does is that whether an exception occurs or not this finally block will be executed if we were trying to print the value at 2 and it will although it does not have any value but there will be no exception because we are trying to print the value within the limits and not outside the limit in that case where the exception has not occurred still the finally block will be executed so again repeating whether an exception occurs or not the finally block will be executed so let us execute this file So now as you can see in the console, it says that exception thrown and the exception is of type java.lang.array index out of bound exception. Why? Because the what is the exception? The index out of bound, the index is at 3. That is what we are trying to print. So it is wrong. So now you must be able to understand that even, the ex even if the exception has occurred, the finally block is executed because the value at array 0 has been printed as 6 and the finally statement is executed. So this is how you use your finally block in order to understand whether an exception occurs or not. These are the block of statements we want to execute and these are the output that we want to display.